Hey people, so I just got the boards I designed uh, home from China and I thought I'd make a video on them. Uh, what I've made is a little development board kind of thing for the Atmega uh, 328P or 168 or anything with similar pins basically. Uh, it's at the Wienwish and I had to go a bit uh, self-centered and put my name on it. Basically, um, we got the Atmega we have crystals for it, we have a uh, tiny USB programmer, it's basically an AT Tiny 85 uh, with the VUSB software and some other stuff and six component components for it. So I can program through the micro USB uh, instead of having a programming head and then I have the ports are port B, C, D and then some 3.3 uh, and 5 volts and ground out there, a reset button and a bunch of little, um, yeah, well, I'm not sure, jumpers, you know. Um, this one up here is for the clock. Basically, right now, um, these two capacitors on the crystal is connected to ground through that. If I set it over here, they will be floating, uh, effectively disconnecting the crystal. So I can use the, the pins the, the crystal is on and run an internal oscillator. Over here we got the analog reference. Uh, right now, the analog reference pin is connected to a hundred, I guess, nanofarad capacitor, because we're using internal AREF or not using it at all. Otherwise, we can uh, switch it over and connect it to the last pin on port. Oh, I don't remember actually. I think it's port C. Um, yeah, I got to look that up actually. I don't remember now. Anyhow, yeah, so we can get an external uh, AREF. And these two are for the I2C. We've got um, two pull-up resistors here, which uh, currently are floating because it's set to not connected. But if I put them over here, they'll be connected to uh, VCC. So we get the uh, well, pull-up through to 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. So we can use I2C. And finally, we got the um, voltage select here. Right now it's set to 3.3 volts, so it's running through this little um, 1117 uh, voltage regulator, regulating to 3.3 volts, otherwise we can connect it directly to the USB input, getting 5 volts on the system instead. Uh, so yeah, the way I got these is I made a design in um, Eagle Cat, and I ordered it from... Shenzhen to you, super Chinese. Okay, I can't get these out with one hand. I need a tripod for my camera or my cell phone. Okay, and they sent me this back. I made a lot of mistakes, which I will go into in just a moment. Uh, but the quality is pretty nice. They made exactly what I designed, basically. This is two boards because uh, I wanted this, but I had some space to spare. I ordered a 10 times 5 centimeter board. And I got another board I gotta make for a friend of mine, so I got this little one on top, which I cut off with a hobby knife. Uh, well, I, um, yeah, I made a cut and then I broke it off. Went pretty well. So yeah, uh, but as you can see, the quality is pretty well. Um, and yeah, I'll go over the uh, the sign flaws I made. And now I'll cut to a little demo. Um, design flaws. Okay, as you can see, there is a pretty messed up uh, silk screen on this. That is because I forgot to remove uh, a name layer when I uh, made the Gerber files I had to send to Shenzhen. I could just have sent the board file, but I kind of want to make the Gerbers myself. Um, so I got a lot like the V rail out here shouldn't be here. The port D has port D on top of port D and stuff like that. Um, these resistor slots down here are not the same as I've used other places, which means they are too small for my resistors, which you can see by me having to bend the leg of that, that is not good. Um, oh yeah, also that is, there are two like major mistakes in my opinion. Um, one is the micro, you can see that looks like crap. That is because uh, apparently Eagle Cat doesn't come standard with a micro USB, so I as it accidentally used a mini USB instead. And the port, the pins I, um, no, the connectors I ordered, this one is a mid mount. It's supposed to be cut out in the board and mounted in the middle of the board. 
So I have to bend the legs down and bend the traces down and yeah, it's horrible, but it works. That is one of the major mistakes I think I made. And the other one is this little fella. Apparently I did not connect the ground leg of the AT Tiny 85 to ground. So I just ran it up here to the ground leg of um, a little output up here. It makes it works. It works. It's a prototype and I'm gonna make a version 2 someday I think. Um, so yeah, I think that is it for the board I think I've, yeah. Oh yeah, a little thing also, I had to change the resistor on the LED to a 520 ohm one instead of the 150 because it was simply too bright. But yeah, I think that is, that is it. Um, yeah, I'll cut to a computer demo. Alright, so this is my somatic. Keep in mind that this is the first, like, real circuit board that I've designed, so I've made a bunch of mistakes, but yeah. Up here we got the programmer, um, basically this part, minus the voltage regulator down here. Uh, it's an AT-Tiny with three resistors and two Zener dials to clamp the voltage on the data lines. And that is basically it. Then you just need the hex files, I'll show you what to get them later, I'll also provide a link in the description for the whole instructable that uh, TSJ Wang made. Uh, without that, I wouldn't have been able to make that because it didn't have space. Downside of this is that it doesn't run on a crystal, so you're clamped at uh, I think 100-200 kilohertz programming uh, bitrate, but uh, I think it's fine. Now we've got pin 17, 18, 19 on 1, which corresponds to 1 for the reset pin, 17, 18, 19 for the nose and Miso and SDK. Now I realized that may give problems in the future, I didn't realize this before I ordered the print actually, that they are permanent connected, because if these are set to outputs, then uh, they will sync current. So yeah, also another problem might be, uh, down here we have the crystal and the crystal select, now if I turn that off and just uh, leave um, uh, the, it leave it floating. Then we still have these two ports connected through a capacitor, so an AC link. And uh, yeah, that is probably not good. But uh, let's see what happens. Now we have the AREF uh, selection where we have the 100 picofarad capacitor and uh, going to pin 21 AREF, um, now pin 21 is, where do we have it, I lost it, I lost pin 21, um, anyhow, the AREF is over here, and as I said, it is port pin 8 on port C, now port C doesn't have that many pins, but uh, yeah, it is the rail I call port C here. And we have the pull-ups for the I2C, and we've got a V-rail up here, and I'm really interested in remembering, oh yeah, pin 21, of course, right here, a ref. So, that is basically the port. Up here we've got a filter capacitor that TFC Wang recommended, so I put it in there just to be safe. And we have the indicator for power on the board, and our wrong uh, USB connector. And this is the basic, basic 11... Uh, 11 1117 uh, volts regulator set up here with uh, yeah with two caps and uh, the 1117 and of course the piece of Now let's see what else. Oh yes, I'm going to show the instructable on TSD Wang. Actually, one more thing first. Here we have oh I'm showing that. Um, here we have uh, AVI Dude. Is it's basically a graphical UI for AVI Dude. I just restarted, so we're not cheating here. I am going to use that to demonstrate the connectivity of our little program on board. Let's select USB Tiny. Port is USB. Bit rate. Let's set that to 10 milliseconds. And try to detect our MCU. And it detects and correctly detects and that make it switch to 328p. We love its fuse bits, etc. We can also program it, but I don't have anything for it right now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty great. It works awesome. I haven't had any issues apart from when I tried to program with a uh, 1.5 megahertz. I didn't like that because I think the standard clock speed of the AT1085 is lower than that, so that's a problem. But uh, this works. I'm pretty satisfied. Now, where I got the program schematic is here. 
and instructable made by TSD Wang for making this little lovely board with an ATI 85 for um, normal to place in USB ASP all not a programmer uh, generally ISP programmers and it works charms and he goes through everything this is the somatic I took there is the filter cap and this has all the semantics, all the images the hex file everything you will need also the component list and he will go through it all so yeah that is a big kudos to him for because I couldn't have made the program without him um, oh yeah last but not least a uh, bit of commercial here this is Shenzhen to you um, yeah uh, amazing site amazing uh, service I think um, this is what I paid seriously um, all you gotta pay on top of that is shipping and you will get 10 identical bolts and you can design them whichever way you want like this you could order this you could get this exact board type uh, if you want it if you had to sign for it of course all you really gotta do is upload your gerber files and they even provide you with the uh, eagle design rules you got uh, you get two files you get a design rule file and cam rule file uh, well a cam job file uh, design rules you can use for to make Eagle check your design and check if it complies with the rules they have set for design like uh, well, these things trace width, text size, all that stuff and the cam uh, job is for making these um, Gerber files that you need to design the bolts so you just gotta plug that in, make your design, make sure it complies make the do the cam job and send them the files and you got a board on the way now I paid, uh, it probably says eleven ninety. I paid about $19, but that's because I wanted fast shipping that cost about, I think it was 7 or $8, yeah, $7, $7, and uh, normal shipping is about 4 I think, triple five or $4, so for about $16 you can get uh, 10 identical PCB boards of up to 5 times 10 centimeters, I think that is an amazing price. You can also for free select between 0 0.8, 0 0.1, uh, 1, uh, and 1.2 millimeters. Some of them cost more. You got a lot of options. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna make an entire commercial here. I'm just really impressed with what I got for the amount of money I paid. Uh, so I just thought I would uh, do a shout out for them. Also, if you are interested in making designs, this is uh, really good route to take in my opinion. Anyhow, I think that is all. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the video, the design I made, want to tell me what I knew I am, or if you want some of the, the files, um, post a comment and I'll share. I'll try to help depending on the question of course. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, see ya.